Hello, how are you doing? Uh, I got a video for you here today, a little teaching from the Bible. Um, this is one I've already done, but I'm going to do a short version. Now, I understand that, um, you know, some of my videos have been getting longer and longer because I, I want to show you every verse. I want to read everything. Um, I want to, like, and I come across rabbit trails, and there's other good things in these, these chapters that I'm looking at, and I can't not say it. But um, I'm realizing that, you know what, people don't have an hour or whatever, 50 minutes to be on a video. So I'm going to try to do some shorter ones. So that's so this is a short version of the uh, case for the rapture in 2022. So what I'm going to give you today is I'm going to give you two timelines. Okay. But as I do this, I'm going to, I'm going to think of it the way Paul might. Um, in 1 Thessalonians 5, when he, he has a uh, passage about the script, uh, rapture, he starts out by saying, let me get there in a second. Oh, second, uh, First Thessalonians 5. He starts by saying, concerning the times and the seasons, brother, you have no need that I should write to you. So I'm going to treat you the same way. Okay. And what he's saying is concerning the times and the seasons, the feast days, God's calendar, all of that, all of those things that are sort of basic to understanding prophecy, how Jesus fulfilled all the spring first days in his first coming. He's going to fulfill all this fall feast days in his second coming. And you got to understand that. If you don't understand that, you really can't understand prophecy. Also that the Sabbath, the Sabbath years, the day of the Lord is a is the 6,000 years on earth, 1,000 year millennial reign. Um, that's all basic understanding to understanding scripture. That's what Paul was saying to his the people he was writing to. I don't have to tell you about that stuff. You know it. So he's basically saying, keep that in your mind as I teach you. Okay, so that's what I kind of want you to do. Anyhow, so I'm going to give you two, two timelines that point to this year as the rapture. Am I saying it has to be this year? No. I can be wrong. I get that. Um, but I'm going to make some statements that it can't be an X amount of time if I'm right about one thing and it doesn't happen, then it's got to be at least this far away. And when I look at the events of the world, I don't see that being possible. So I'm going to give you two timelines. Okay. Now there's somebody out there saying, oh, he's date setting. He's a date setter. You ever heard that people like, you know, believe the 11th commandment is thou shalt not set dates. Well, God told us to watch. And a lot of people would say, you know, watch is be ready. Yeah, no, it's not. I'm going to do another video about um, um, watching. And I've actually I've got my outline about the keeping watch and how it's connected to the thief, to the thief in the night. And that's some, my next video to do. So that's my, one that you, if you, you know, might want to look at. But yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with trying to figure out dates. But if it's the guy that's out there that's saying, um, God told me this, and that person's wrong, that's not good. That's a false prophet. And that person's going to have to be, they're going to be accountable to that. All right. So if you got a Bible, turn to Daniel 9. And I'm not, you know, you can put pause me, whatever. I'm not going to slow down. Um, go to Daniel 9. And we're seeing about 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Um, this is actually um, sort of repentance or restoration from missing 70 to Shemitah years. And that's what Jesus was talking about when Paul said, how long, how many times should I forgive somebody? Seven. And Peter said, and Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. Anyhow, these are all weeks of years. So think about a calendar, but rather than being days, it's years. You have six days you work the land and a year that you have a Sabbath rest, a week of years. The, that's what these 70 weeks, 70 weeks of years, that's what it is. So this totals 490 years. Um, and actually, you can actually count the, the years to when Messiah was, was crucified, basically. Um, but what's interesting is if you go down into verse 25, there from no understand from the going forth command to restore the, and rebuild the temple until the prince, Messiah the prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The streets shall be built again, and the wall even in troublesome time. After the 62 weeks, in other words, after the six, seven weeks and the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. Okay. So Messiah is being cut off after a week of years. So if you got your calendar, 
in your mind. This week's taken care of. You got to go to the next, to get to the next year, you got to go to the next row, the Sunday year. But it's a year, not a day. So that's the beginning of a week of years. Yeshua is crucified on the beginning of a week of years. That's important because we can use that date to count. See, the rapture, excuse me, starting with the rapture, tribulation is a week of years. You can't start a week in the beginning of the week. You got to start, start to be, excuse me, you can't start in the middle of the week. You got to start at the beginning of the week. So if we know what year Yeshua is crucified, we know that's the first year of a week of years. We can figure it out because you have seven, seven, seven sets of seven years, and then a year of Jubilee. This is in basic, again, basic stuff. You're looking at Leviticus 25. I've done teachings on this about days and um, God's calendar and his appointed times. So you can count by 50s. Okay. Christ was crucified in 30 AD, not 33. If you're saying 33 AD, you're basing that on him being crucified on a Friday. Yeshua said that he would be in the grave for three days and three nights, a sign of Jonah, that he'd be in the ground for three days and three nights. You cannot get three nights from Friday to Sunday. I don't care how you try. You just can't do it. Then Yeshua would be a false prophet because he had a prophecy and it didn't come true. He's crucified on a Thursday. The next day after Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, or the beginning of it, and that is a Sabbath. Yes, there's more than just a weekly Sabbath. Everybody thinks, okay, you got to get them off the cross. Uh, before the Sabbath, it had to be a Friday because Saturday is the Sabbath. There are other Sabbaths. Again, a Shemitah year. That seventh year is a Sabbath year, an entire year that's a Sabbath. All right. So 30 AD, do your 50s. The next week of year, years is in 30, 2030. Or... 2023, because you can subtract seven, because you're just doing 50, subtract the seven. All right. But it's not actually 2030 and 2023. See, he Yeshua was crucified in the spring, but the rapture is on Rosh Hashanah. That's the day that no man knows the day or the hour. I've got videos on it. Go and check it. I'm not going to explain it here. All right. Um, it has to be Rosh Hashanah. That's the day that no man knows the day or the hour. See, Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the year, seventh month, but it's the head of the year. They've got two different calendars, but that's in the fall. So it's really 2029, 2030, 2022, 2023. So if it's a 50, tribulation, that week of years can either start in 2022 or 2030. You follow me? Play it back. Replay it if you didn't. I'll say it again. See, tribulation is a week of years. You've got to start at the beginning of the week. The next beginning of the week is this fall, 2020. Excuse me, 2022. And then 2029. Okay, I don't. So if it doesn't happen this year, you got to wait seven more years. Hmm, I don't see it. Not with everything going on. Not with everything I see going on. Okay, now let's move to the second one. The second one involves a year of Jubilee. Okay, I don't know how much you know about a year of Jubilee, but if you go and read about a year of Jubilee in, in um, Leviticus 25, what you're going to see is that basically everybody goes back to their homeland. Your homeland possessions are restored and all the captives are set free. Okay. That makes sense? Three basic things. There's more to it. Everybody goes back to their homeland. Your, your, uh, your homeland possessions are restored, and the captives are set free. In fact, you would figure out how much time, if you're selling the farm, how many years are left before the year of Jubilee? So that, so that that's what the price you would sell it for, because you get it back. It also says the land. Jesus forevermore. Start reading your Old Testament um, prophecies, Zechariah and other ones. Yeshua will be in the midst of the temple in Jerusalem. We're all there. And the land will be his. The I am convinced 
that going into a year of Jubilee is when the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God starts where Yeshua is reigning here on earth. He'll be reigning in heaven for seven years, um, just like Yeshua, excuse me, just like David reigned in Hebron for seven years before he went as king to Jerusalem. All right. So here's another interesting thing. Rosh Hashanah is a rapture. Yom Kippur is the day of judgment that the, the, uh, at the end of the seven years of tribulation. Tribulation is a week of years. It's seven years exactly. So if it starts on Rosh Hashanah and ends on Yom Kippur, it can't be seven years. It's seven years and ten days. You get that? Make sense? Hopefully it does. If you, if, you, if you understand the times and the seasons and all of that, you would get it. All right, so here's the other thing with that. So a lot of people say, well, you know, the rapture happens, and you probably wait about 10 days, and then tribulation starts. Okay. But if you're going into a year of Jubilee, it's actually seven years exactly. Why? Read about it in Leviticus 25. A year of Jubilee starts on the 10th of the first month of the year. You know all those things in the Bible where it says on the 10th day of the seventh month, they're important. Okay, it's God's calendar. All right. Now, let's go someplace else real quick. Um, let's go first to Ezekiel 40. I'm actually going to go there. I want to read this to you. Ezekiel 40. Now, Ezekiel 40 through Ezekiel 48 is all talking about the millennial kingdom when Yeshua is reigning here on earth. Okay, it's, that's what it's all talking about. Um, pretty cool stuff in there. Even the windows that are in the temple will be beveled out. Really? Why? So that the light can get out of the temple. Okay. So Ezekiel gets this vision. And it says, Ezekiel 41, 40. Verse 1, in the 25th year of our captivity, at the beginning of the year on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was captured, on the very same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me there. Wow, that's cool. You don't get it. Maybe you do. I wouldn't have got it for so, so long. Until recently, actually it was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever, that I got this. At the beginning of the year, on the 10th day, of the month. Well, the beginning of the year is Rosh Hashanah, and that's the first day of the month. The only time the beginning of the year falls on the 10th day of the month is the beginning of a year of Jubilee. So, you sh so Ezekiel gets this vision about the millennial kingdom at the beginning of a year of Jubilee. You following me? You tracking with me? I think, that, I think it's screaming that it starts on the beginning of a year of Jubilee. All right. Think about those things that a year of Jubilee we talked about. Setting the captives free. Um, everybody goes back to their homeland. Homeland possessions are restored to you. Return, turn with me to, um, to Isaiah 61. Yeshua has just come out of the desert. Spent After he'd been baptized, he spent 40 days. That's Teshuvah, 40 days of prayer and repentance. It was ending in the last 10 days, Rosh Hashanah, the Yom Kippur, the High Holy Days, the most important days of the year on the Jewish calendar, okay? Um, anyhow, so it's somewhere around Yom Kippur that he's coming out and he's having this. This time he goes into the temple. The hand of scrolling picks out and he reads from the scroll which is their Bible. They were on scrolls. All the different books were on scrolls. It reads Isaiah 61, starting in one. The Spirit of God is upon me, but the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor and has sent me to heal up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty for the captives, freedom for the captives, setting the captives free, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening up to the open and I'm sorry, in the opening of the prison to those who were bound, again, setting people free, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, that is a year of jubilee, and the day of vengeance of our God. Oh, wait, he didn't leave that. He didn't say that. He left that out. That's the second coming. All of these things represent what Yeshua will be doing in his first coming. It sounds like a year of jubilee. So I was, I was always under the uh, frame of mind that he read this in a year of Jubilee. But you know, you can't quite get the day 
you know, if you start looking at, at um, the stuff in the Gospels, you can't really make sure that he was there on that day. But what if it's a year of Jubilee when he is crucified in 30 AD? And then this has been fulfilled. The first part of this has been fulfilled. If that's the case, count your 50s. The next year of Jubilee is 2030, actually 2029. We went through that. But that's when he comes back and his feet are on the Mount of Olives. Subtract seven, coming back in 2022. If I'm right about the year of Jubilee here, that means if it doesn't come back, you've got to wait another 50 years. We don't have another 50 years. There's a good chance that he could come back this fall on Rosh Hashanah. That's somewhere around September 26th. Does that mean he has to come back? No. If I knew 100% positive that he'd be coming back, um, I wouldn't be planning on going to work tomorrow, I'll tell you that. I would just be doing more videos and sharing Yeshua with people and doing what I can to further the kingdom. So what does this mean to you? What does this mean to all of us? If we are that close, does it mean we quit our job and go on vacation and spend all our money? No. We continue to work. Clock's ticking, running out of time. Got to have Yeshua, got to share Yeshua. Nothing else matters. You got to be plundering hell in order to populate heaven. Get out there and share Yeshua with people. God bless you. Shalom.